right, let's get our service started today. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. And if we wasn't social distancing, I'd, well, I'd hug and kiss every one of you. How many glad we're social distancing? Raise your hand. I appreciate that, Richard. That really hurts me down inside, but we're glad to have you for our in-person worship and those that are still uh, sheltering in place, staying at home, we understand, and we're glad that you joined us live and those that will tune in, thousands during the week uh, will tune into the program and we welcome you also. We have met to worship and we're glad you are here today. Good to have with us today, Mr. and Misery's Alexander. They are from the beautiful city of uh, Radford, Virginia, close to Roanoke, Virginia, right in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. And there from Gethsemane Baptist Church, we preached up there for a humpteen dozens of years. I want you to make them welcome today. Wave at us, guys. Glad to have some fellow Virginian people here today. And uh, they speak English. We speak Georgian. Amen. And glad to have them. I see other visitors here. Thank you so much for coming. And the Lord is good. Somebody real important uh, is going to come walking, well, rolling through these doors here in a minute. And uh, when they do, I want you to give a uh, letter rip, standing ovation, yell, scream. Now, don't throw things. That's what they're doing in the protest. Don't throw nothing. Just, just uh, stand and scream. Uh, isn't it good to see Jerry standing up here? <laughs> hold on, hold on. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's Matt. Let him know you love him. Praise God. Amen. Woo! Praise God. Wonderful. Matt, if we wasn't social distancing, I'd come back and kiss you. He said, no, I'm not going to do that anyway, man. I, no. Matt, I love you, but I wouldn't do that if we wasn't social distancing. But oh, God bless you, son. Good to see you. Praise God. Been praying for you, praying for your dad. And uh, God bless you. And uh, there's somebody else here in hiding. And you can't, you can't get near him, but he's over there hiding, Brother Tom. Yeah, he's over there hiding. And uh, we're going to get through all this mess. One of these days, somehow, through God's blessing, we're going to get through it. And uh, good to see you in the house of the Lord today. I'm about to cry. Just appreciate God helping us, touching us, moving in our lives, and comforting us when we're weak and comforting us when we're weary. And good to see Miss Janet sitting back there, honey. We love you, praying for you. And that, that big old bruiser with her is Mark, her, her famous son, and I've said this in front of him, I'll say it behind his back and in front of him. If every parent had a son like him, there would be no elder neglection in this world. And I love you for that, son. I appreciate you. Robin, good to see you today. Oh, I didn't, oh, I'm sorry. Papa Collins, our Santa Claus is here today. My goodness, good to see you. Amen. Oh, my. And, uh, I'm going to get choked up now. You know what we all do? Let's just call about 10 minutes and cry a little bit. And then we'll call recess and shout a little bit. But uh, hey, children, we're going to get out of here one day. We're going home. We're going to leave all this trouble and trial behind us. Man, it's good. Let's stand and sing. There's power in the blood. Two verses, first and last verse. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? 
There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. All right, let's sing When We All Get to Heaven. Another great song of the faith. When we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy. Great and good. In him labor, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. On the last, onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Thank you. You may be seated and God bless you. I want to dedicate the program today. Miss Debbie Wells, this is John Burdett's uh, uh, sister-in-law over in Alabama. They're watching today and we've been praying for her and she got a good report from the doctor. So Miss Wells, God bless you. And if Judy's there with you, make sure she's living right. We're worried about her sometime. And God bless you. Glad to have the McEvers with us. They've just moved to our area. Listen to this, from Virginia. And uh, <laughs> welcome to the promised land, amen. And we're glad to have them. And Miss Janet, this is so amazing. That lady sitting over there, her father is Butch Abbott. That's the man that your last husband, Jay, led to Christ and was a missionary for many, many years. Only God could work that out. But let's make the McEvers welcome today. Thank you so much uh, for being in the service. Again, there'll be no service tonight. And we'll do one more Wednesday online. The Lord willing, September, we'll start back Wednesday nights. The Lord willing, October, uh, we're going to start, we're going to try to open up again. And so everybody brush your teeth, keep your hands clean. And uh, we're going to do what we can for the glory of the Lord. Uh, immediately after the service this morning, as soon as uh, the service is over, I'll be kind of scooping out that door and I need to see the deacons, trustees, finance committee uh, and Brother Tim's Sunday school class, the old Python finance class for about a 10 or 15 minute meeting. I'll make it quick because I know your wives will be hungry and they'll be out in the car blowing the horn wanting you to come and that will embarrass you in front of all these men uh, because they have their wife in subjection and you don't and... Uh, so we'll work on that, and uh, we'll have a good time, just some business matters we need to discuss, and thank you. And let me say this to you that are here today, 
and you that are watching online, uh, especially the members at Harvest, thank you for being faithful in your monetary gifts to the church. I appreciate the people that are giving online, those who are mailing it, uh, those that will stop by and put it in the mailbox, that even though we're having the shutdown, our mission programs, our facilities, everything must continue. And I appreciate you so very much being faithful to the Lord in that area. And so far, to God be the praise and the glory, uh, things are running well. We thank God for his blessings upon us. Sometimes God allows us to get in a position where all we can do is look up and trust him. And then he reminds us, I'm good. You preached about me. You've sang about me. You've rejoiced about me. But I want you to see what I can do. And I appreciate God being faithful and kind toward us. In fact, we ought to just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the goodness of God in the land of the living. Two things quickly, and then we're going to have a special prayer, and then we're going to sing a song together, and then Brother Roger's going to come and bless us with a song right before the message. Uh, as you know, Brother Joe uh, Moats here, we got a lot of Josephses in the church, but Joseph Moat, stand up Joseph, this young preacher that the hand of the Lord's upon, uh, you can sit down now, was supposed, to, was supposed to leave next week to go to college, to Golden State, our dear friend Dr. Treba in Santa Clara, California. If you've been keeping up with the videos that Dr. Treba's been putting out, uh, the state of California is really... Uh, making it hard on the churches, especially those of any size and especially with those that have uh, colleges and schools. And so to make a long story short, they have put so much pressure, uh, Dr. Treber, in fact, they fined him last Sunday $5,000 for meeting Sunday morning, $5,000 for meeting Sunday night, $5,000 for meeting on Wednesday night, and they've told him, every time you have church, we're going to fine you 5000 And they will continually raise that. And when either they break Dr. Treber or the church, they'll continue to meet, they will start probably other things. You know, who knows how far uh, people will go. And everybody, even my critics, better pull your head out of the sand. We're in the battle of our life for our freedoms. And uh, so to make a long story short, they had, they're going to close the college campus, but not the college. So their first season, their first semester, will be online. And so Joseph will be doing online. And you pray for him. Like, I, I don't know what kind of student he is, but I know what kind of student... I am. And if I would have had to get, and I did some of my degrees, but if I had to get everything online, especially younger, I wouldn't have made it. I was the kind of dude you had to set him on the front seat in front of the teacher, smack him three or four times because I'm hunting and fishing, you know, or looking at girls. <laughs> Glory. Back then, not now. Man, and uh, so pray for Joseph. Pray for all the other hundreds of students. And I want you to pray for my friend and his wife that the Lord would help them. Dr. Treber's like all leaders. You try to put on this, hey, we're all right. But I know him well, and I saw it in his eyes. Last night when I talked to him on the phone, I heard it in his voice. And you'll never find a more sweet, kind, compassionate man than Dr. Treber. So I want us to lift them up to the Lord in prayer. And then I want you to pray for all the churches 
in Louisiana and South Arkansas. Uh, I was supposed to preach this coming week in Louisiana, the east side first, and then I would spend the last part of the week in the western part of the state. I'm still going to the east side the first part of the week, but where I was going for the second half on the west side, the eye of the hurricane went right over it. And uh, I, the pastor called me. I felt so sorry for him. He was crying. He said, Brother Joe, we've, we've lost it all, man. And he said, it's gonna be a long, long time before we'll ever be able to have church again. He said that we have two little grocery stores in our little town, they're leveled. The post office doesn't work. I said, ours don't either, and it ain't even been hit by a hurricane. <laughs> and, and it's just a, a difficult time. And you may have not come prepared today to do that, and I understand, but I want us at least next Sunday to take up just a special offering and whatever extra you can give. I'd like to be able to send it to some of our churches in Louisiana to help them. They need supplies. They need <laughs> uh, Clorox. There's 800,000 people with no electricity. I talked to a pastor last night. He said it'd be eight weeks before I'll be able to take a bath. And, uh, and I was picking at him. I said, as big as you are, that's going to be a problem, Kerry. But pray for these people that the Lord would, and I know he will, he'll meet their needs, and pray that God will allow our church to have a small part uh, in their recovery. And if you want to do something, let me know and we'll just take up an offering, have it next week, and I can mail it to a church close by. They'll get it to the people that need it the most. And so we're gonna pray about that today. And before we pray, I wonder how many others all over this room, you have a need, you have a request, and you believe today the Lord is able to do exceeding, abundant, above all, that we ask or think. Brother Richard, you brought a great message Wednesday night. Blessed our hearts, brother, and we love you. And uh, why don't you come up here, Richard, and that way you can use the mic for our broadcast and pray for us and ask the hand of the Lord. Matt, it's good to see you, son. I appreciate God sparing your life. You know, I know you got a long way of recovery, but God is able and you got somebody that loves you right there taking care of you. And at least that's what she told me she did. And, uh, and your family's pulling for you. Matt's dad, uh, Mr. Everett, got some bad news, some health issues. I called your dad and had prayer with him and we'll continue to pray for him. I don't know about you, but heaven's sounding sweeter all the time. We may get without money, we may get without a nation we may get without religious freedom. Who knows what's coming, but we'll never be without hope because our hope is anchored in Jesus Christ. What a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. And we appreciate it. Brother Richard, we love you, buddy. Pray for us. Ask his blessings on the service, and then we're going to sing two numbers. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Love you, man. Let's pray. God, you've already been so good to us this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Brother Matt being back here today. And Lord, we pray you'd speed healing to him. Lord, make him completely whole. God, we pray, Lord, and thank you for Brother Tom being back here today. And God, pray that you can continue to heal him and make him whole. And Lord, we thank you, God, for your comfort that you've already given the ones who have lost loved ones here today. And you've been such a blessing to us already. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, even in this time of uh, trouble and time of, uh, of such uh, just terrible things going on in the world, dear God, we know you're still in charge. And God, we pray, Lord, that you would bless. Father, we ask God for healing. I, I just ask you, Father, to drive this virus from our land and from the world we live in. God, I, I pray that it would go away. Lord, my heart was so broke yesterday as... Uh, Eli now went places and he said, Paul, Paul, do I have to wear a mask? I never thought, Lord, we would have to hear such a thing like that. And God, I just pray for healing 
Please, Father, touch. And Lord, I pray for these churches that Brother Joe just mentioned. Dear God, Lord, I pray, Father, that you bless them. Bless these pastors, Lord. God, we pray for Brother Trebert and this he's going through in California. God, Lord, please touch him. God, give him strength, Lord. And I pray, God, that we would rally around him, not just in prayer, but in financial help. Now, Lord, I ask, God, that you bless the service here today because this is what we've got. We never know, Lord, when they may say we can't have church. And, Lord, I just ask you, dear God, to bless the service today. I pray, Lord, you would move in a mighty way. Bless the singing. But, Lord, most of all, bless the preaching. God, be with our pastor. Encourage him. Lift him up and anoint him, dear God, as he preaches today. And, Lord, if there be one here that's not saved, save them. Lord, if there be one at home watching that's not saved, save them. God, help us, Lord, to take the gospel to this lost and dying world. And we'll thank you, Lord, for what you do, because you always do right. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stand together and sing the chorus. And Jerry, I want you to come and sing at least one verse of that. I may sing a verse of it. What a day, a glorious day that'll be. How many thank God for the day you got saved? Praise God, I'm glad there's coming another day. Sing it now. Oh, what a day. Is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day. That will be sing out. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. We sang this to my daddy when he made the crossing. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness nor pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day, that will be. Sing it, church. What a day that will be, oh, in my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. What a day, glorious day, that will be. Turn to your neighbor and say, praise God, I wouldn't care if it happened today. Amen. Amen, you may be seated. Come on up, Brother Roger. You can be turning to Matthew chapter number 25. And Brother Roger's gonna sing a song today that kind of describes what I believe is the next thing on God's prophetic time clock. I would encourage you today to look away from the signs 
and listen for the shout. Brother Roger, sing for us the midnight cry. And it's okay to get happy about it. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Oh, and it's closer now than it's ever been. And I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. Oh, and at the midnight cry will be going home.
want to tell you, once in a while, Roger, them large diaphragms comes in handy, don't it? My soul above. Uh, this week I was in Danville, Virginia, where his grandfather and my daddy ministered together 50-some years ago. And Rog, I passed those street corners where his grandfather and my dad preached and shouted the victory. And I'm glad old-time religion's alive and well. And I praise God for the victory. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter number 25. And uh, if I say something this morning or uh, in the course of the message, deal with something you don't believe or agree with, don't mess with me. I've had a hard enough day as it is. But I'm glad the truth remains that Jesus is coming. And let me just say to you uh, that believe that uh, we're going to get out before the tribulation. Uh, those of you who believe we're going to get out in the middle of it. Those who believe we're going to get out at the end. And those like you that's been married, we've been in one ever since we've been wed. Instead of fighting over when you're going to get out, you better make sure you're going to get out. And when you get out, you're going to be glad you got out because it's not what I'm getting out of. I'm excited about it. It's what I'm going to. And I'm glad that Jesus Christ is coming again some glad morning. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, and notice, took no oil with them. But the wives, but the wise, took all in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Verse number six is our text. And at midnight. Boy, if you want to see, there are some interesting things God does in the Bible at midnight. It was at midnight the blood was applied to the doorpost of Egypt. and God emancipated his people out of Egyptian bondage. It was in midnight in the dungeon, the inner prison in the city of Philippi, where Paul and Silas rocked the jail with their prayers and with their praise. It was at midnight the man went to his friend on behalf of another friend in Luke 11 and got fresh bread in the midnight hour. I'm glad that God is good in the morning. God is good in the afternoon. God is good in the evening. And even at midnight, God is still at work. And at midnight, the cry was made. That was a cry made. Here's the cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. The midnight cry was made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, that our lamps, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came. And they, say this out loud with me, here's your key, and they that were ready. Turn to somebody sitting beside of you this morning and say, in the name of Jesus, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to ride? I'm glad today I'm ready. And if you are not ready, that's why God lets you be here today. That's why God lets you tune to this program today so you can get ready. And they that were, sit with me, ready. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage 
and the door was shut. After what came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Jesus makes the application now in the 13th verse. Watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe it is teaching you and I that since we don't know when the Lord is coming, the day or the hour, let's be ready today. Because I believe we are closer and nearer to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ than any other generation has been before. When you come to the Gospel of Matthew, there are three large sermons. They are called discourses. Three different times in Matthew's Gospel, you have three large discourses. So therefore, Brother Joe is not the only one that's been known to have a long sermon. The first discourse is called the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew's chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8. The second discourse is the parables of the kingdom in Matthew chapter number 13. The third discourse is when you come to Matthew chapter 24 and 25. It is called the Olivet Discourse. This is where Jesus, the master teacher, takes two wonderful chapters, Matthew 24 and 25, and deals with things of the last days. The signs and the sins and the sorrows, but yet the suddenness of the soon return of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And nestled in this great sermon on uh, uh, Olivet Discourse, nestled in this great sermon on the th doctrine of last things, you, you come to chapter number 25, and I believe these first 13 verses contain what I call one of the princes of all of the parables. Now, I love all of the parables that Jesus gave but some just seem to stand out is what I call the prince of parables. For instance, that one he gave on the sheep and the coin and the prodigal son. What a parable. What about the one that he gave about the peril of great price? Well, I believe nestled among all of these princes of parables is the one before us this morning. It is called the parable of the ten virgins. I like to call it the parable of the midnight cry. Now, what is a parable? You've heard me say this so much, but sometimes it's good to repeat. A parable is an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. Say that with me. A parable is an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. It is something that happens on earth physically that is a picture, that is an allegory, that is an illustration, that is a truth of a spiritual truth or a spiritual aspect that's going to happen one day in heaven. Well, in this parable of the virgins or in this parable of the midnight cry, we find the illustration of the second coming of Christ. We find the inspiration of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And then even some instructions that God gives us concerning the second coming, the soon return of of the Lord Jesus. Before I get into that, just let me lay down this introductory thought. Matthew 24 and 25 is literally an answer to some questions the disciples 
ask Jesus. Remember the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what is the sign of your coming? When is the end of the age the world is going to take place? Jesus, when can we know that all things are about to be completed? And so Jesus takes two chapters and talks about the signs, the sorrows, the suddenness of the soon return of Jesus Christ to this world. And let me emphasize again, we're not here this morning to argue eschatology. We're not here this morning to try to figure out how many hairs is in the horse's tail in the book of the Revelation. And we're not here to argue about who the witnesses are and who the Antichrist is. Someone asked a friend of mine, said, do you really believe there is an antichrist? He said, well, I've not met him, but I've been married to a sister for 30 years. Now, we're not here to argue over that, but we are here to trumpet this truth that Jesus Christ one day, very soon, will physically, literally, and bodily invade planet Earth and carry away the saints of God to a land that is fairer than day. And in light of that, I want to emphasize the words of John the Revelator in the last chapter of the book of Revelation. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And you know what that means in Georgia and Virginia? That means let it rip, hurry up. I can't hardly wait because I want to tell you what's going to fix the problems and the bewilderment and the broken hearts in this world we live in. The coming of Christ, the second coming of Jesus. This world is not our home and we're headed to heaven and this could be the day when Jesus Christ comes for the saints of God. This morning there are three things in this parable of the midnight cry that I want us to see. And we're probably going to run out of time because I rarely preach past 12. So let me give you the outline and then I'll dive into it and just have me a spell. Three things in chapter 25 about Christ's coming. Number one, I want you to see a time that is blessed. A time that is blessed. Secondly, I want you to see a truth that is beautiful. A truth that is beautiful. And then if we have time, I want you to see a tragedy that is bad. Some were ready and some were not ready. And sad to say, ladies and gentlemen, there's people in this room this morning that will be ready and some will not be ready when Jesus Christ comes to this earth again. Number one, look back at the very beginning of our text. And I want to talk about a time that is blessed. According to verse number six, this event unfolds for them at the hour of midnight. That's why it's called the midnight cry. And at midnight, a cry was made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. This event happened in this text literally when the hand was on the 12 in the midnight hour. But let me emphasize this morning over and over again, this verse is not teaching. This passage is not teaching. And nowhere in the Bible does it teach that the literal second coming of Christ is going to happen when the clock is 12 o'clock high at a certain hour. Instead of getting our eyes on numbers on the clock, let's look at the season and what midnight represents. Well, let me just say this. It may happen when the hands are on the 12. It may happen when the hands is on the five. 
It may happen when the hand is on the six. It may happen when the hand is on the 10 or the 11. I don't know where the hands of the time clock will be, but I do know this. And such an hour as ye think not, Jesus Christ is coming into this world. Now think about it. Out of all of the analogies he could use, he talked about midnight. Now what is so special about midnight? Well, let me answer your question with a question. What is midnight? Let me tell you what midnight is. It's the closing of an old day and the beginning whoop, of a new day. Well, glory. It is the closing out of an old day. I wonder this morning, is there anybody here that's ever had such a rotten, foul, messed up, bewildering day, you went to bed and went, whoo, thank God that's over. And you went to bed hoping when that clock goes off in the morning, or if you're a young married couple, when that screaming young'un wakes you up in the morning, you're gonna get out of bed and that next day is gonna be much better, much easier. You see, when that clock strikes midnight, it says two things. Everything you've gone through up to this point is over. Whew. And something else awaits. You know where I believe we are this morning, ladies and gentlemen, on God's prophetic time clock. I believe we are in the midnight hour. I believe that we are on the threshold of saying bye-bye to a bunch of stuff that's hurtful and painful and unexplainable and a hello and welcome and glory to a new world, to a new day, to a new level, to a new worship, to a new heaven. Hold on, children. Don't give up now. Don't be discouraged now. Don't be afraid now. Let me tell you where we are. We're on the threshold of the ending of the old day and on the threshold where God Almighty will make all things new. All things new. Midnight in the book of Exodus, as I referred to a while ago, when they put that blood on the door, whoo, they were about to say goodbye to all the heartaches of Egypt and hello to the land of Canaan where the milk and the honey flow. As I referred to a while ago in Acts 16, Paul and Silas at midnight is about to say goodbye to the persecution and the beatings that they and the incarceration they encountered for the cause of Christ. And they're about to say hello to joy, peace, revival, and God manifesting his presence here in this text. And at midnight, a cry was made. Those that belong to the bridegroom, those that belong to the bridegroom, I wonder, do we have anybody in this room this morning? You belong to the bridegroom. To those that belong to the bridegroom, you've walked through the valleys and you've climbed the mountains and you've carried your burdens and you've fought your battles. You're about to say goodbye to all of your troubles and you're about to meet the lover of your soul and go to a place where he hath prepared. That's what Jesus meant right smack dab middle in the gospel of John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. 
God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. You say, Pastor, where do you think we are on this Sunday morning in 2020? I'm going to tell you where exactly I believe we are. We're on the threshold of saying goodbye to COVID, goodbye to cancer, goodbye to car wrecks, goodbye to bankruptcy, goodbye to broken hearts, goodbye to disappointments, and hello Jesus, and hello New Jerusalem, and hello heaven. I want to say, hold on youngins. I know it's midnight, but the dark, my God, I feel like preaching, but the darkest hour, it's just before dawn. We'll bid this world goodbye, and the best for a child of God is yet to come. You know what I love about large preachers? I'm going to be like everybody else. Don't offend me. I'm sensitive. So don't talk about fat, bald headed preachers no more, or I'm going to protest with a sign at your house. You say, no haired big boys. But it's the same. You know what I love about large preachers? Most all of our illustrations revolve around food. And you know what I like preaching to large congregations? You understand the illustrations. I'm not looking in any general direction. I'm just praying for Jesus to come and get me out of this hole. I just dug myself in. Billy Kelly was one of my buddies. He was one of my heroes. What I loved about Brother Billy Kelly, if he preached to 40 or to 5,000, he was the same. If he was around a doctor, a lawyer, a banker, or a coal miner, or a grave digger, or somebody that didn't have an education, he was the same. I say about Jesus what they say about, uh, about Billy, what they said about Jesus, the common people heard him gladly. We were in Burnsville, North Carolina, and we was eating at this lady's house. Boy, she knew Brother Billy was coming. And man, she set a spread. Boy, that good old fried chicken. And it ought to be a sin to do something to a chicken other than fry that thing. And boy, I, I'm talking about that kind of fried chicken, Jerry, that, 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 that grease, you know, runs down here. The kind your hot doctor says, stay away from. And boy, that corn on the cob. And listen, I don't eat it. I don't even like the name of it, but Billy said it was good. Squash. Okra. I don't, I don't like to eat that stuff, but boy, I love fried chicken and macaroni and cheese. If it's starchy and greasy, bring it on, brother. I'm on a low-carb diet. Can I get a witness? And boy, we ate and ate. Brother John, that little woman comes in there and said, okay, brother Billy, I, I, are y'all ready for dessert? Old Brother Billy weighed about 400 at that time. He pushed that table back. He said, no, sister. I, I, I can't handle it no more. He said, honey, I am full up to here. She said, Brother Billy, it's banana pudding. He said, bring it on, sister. That's what I've been saving that much right there for. And she said something to him, Brother Tom, I've never heard, and I grew up in the mountains, never heard this. She came and got Billy's plate and mine, and she said to him, keep your fork. Keep your fork. He said, what for? She said, dessert is on the way. The best is yet to come. Son, Brother Billy Kelly forgot about the fried squash, the mashed taters, the fried chicken, the banana pudding. He looked over at me and those big tears rolled down his cheeks. He said, glory to God, Joe, in this world of trouble, in this world of trial, sometimes we want to give up, but the Holy Ghost just said to me, keep your fork, the best is yet to come. Be not weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. Those that walk by the graveside, 
and those who've stood in the hospital and those who felt like the devil had run over your life. Hey, it's midnight. The old day is about to pass and we're on the breaking of a new day. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. A time that is blessed. It's midnight. Something's about to pass away and something better is about to come over the horizon. The weeping may endure for a night. Finish it. Joy cometh in the morning. A time that is blessed midnight. Oh, but I got to slow down right here. Number two, I want you to see a truth that is beautiful. Right here laid before us is one of the most beautiful truths in the Bible. Now remember, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus tells the story of a Jewish wedding at that day. That Jewish wedding of that day deals with the procurement of a bride, the payment of the bride, the procession of the bride, and the place of the bride. Let me say it like this. In that day, Landon, Spencer, Joseph, listen close. You better thank God that you don't live in that day because in that day, a man could not get him a wife if he didn't pay her daddy a lot of money. What a difference 2,000 years has made. Buford, instead of a fine young man paying you for one of them girls, you had to pay for the stinking wedding. And for all of y'all that y'all kids just eloped and went down to the justice of the peace, hallelujah. But for some of us, oh Lord, that had to pay. Number one, you don't even like that person. And I'm not referring to your daughter. <laughs> and you gotta pay him to take her off your hand. Brother Bill, I don't understand it. You, you, you work and you sweat and you invest all that money in that girl and some guy, Richard, just comes by and winks and, bye, daddy. I like it, Old Testament. They had to pay the dad. <laughs> it's called a dowry. And here's literally what would take place. Mickey, what are you laughing at? Are you, are you okay? So, the the dad, <laughs> Mickey, you're messing me up now. I'll find out after a while what was so funny, and I'm sure you'd be glad to tell him. So this boy pays the daddy. So he he puts the down. Uh, that's what he's smiling about. <laughs> he puts. The down payment, he pays for the bride. Any dads here liking this so far? I mean, I mean, it's cool, ain't it? So he puts that down, and she stays at her dad's. Then while she's staying with the dad's, he goes to his father's house and builds a chamber, a paradise, a palace, a place. And when all things are finished, listen, a trumpet will sound and he will leave his father's place with his entourage and go to her father's. Oh, you get to keep that just to the end of the sermon. After church, we'll settle up, glory to God. That's what he's grinning about. And he goes and gets her, and they blow another trumpet, and her and her maidens, and all of her family, glory, go back with the groom, 
to his father's house. Glory, glory. And while they are there at the father's house, a ceremony takes place. After the ceremony takes place, there is a table spread where they have an, a meal. It's called the marriage supper. For you Yankees, the marriage dinner. The marriage supper. Then after the marriage supper, the groom and the bride go through the father's house and they go to that palace, that chamber, that place where the man built while she was away and that's where they dwell and live and have a wonderful life together. My God, what a picture. What a beautiful picture. You say, what has that got to do with us? I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna try to give it to you without exploding. They taught me, Dr. Randall, homiletics, not to enjoy my own preaching. It's too late, I done got over in that world. Hey, 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary, the rich, royal, divine, holy, sinless, perfect, eternal blood of Jesus Christ paid a payment and paid a debt and paid that I might have a relationship with his Father, God Almighty, through his Son, Jesus Christ. And then he went away to prepare a place, a chamber, a palace, a mansion. And that's where he is now. I'm here, espoused, hanging out, watching and waiting, listening, anticipating, because whatever's happening here, it's going to be over when he gets back. Then the trumpet will sound. I said the trumpet will sound. I said the trumpet will sound, and he will leave his father's place and he's coming to this place. And then all the saved, blood-washed, Holy Ghost regenerated will leave this place with him to go back to his father's place. And there'll be a ceremony in Revelation 4 and 5. And there will be a celebration. Whoop, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we're going in to the new Jerusalem, the city of God, the place that he has prepared and you really can say it and the church and Jesus live happily ever after what a truth Mickey before I forget it and get in a big way of preaching I want my money back brother God bless you ah glory it's all there You know what these virgins is doing? They're waiting on the espoused to come. And that's why they got their lamps. That's why they got their lights. Because it's going to get dark right before he comes. I want you to notice something in the text this morning. That was a division made. It says 10, but five were wise and five were foolish. And I've looked at this and looked at this and as far as I can tell, now if you come up with something else, talk to me about it tomorrow. But as far as I can tell, the only difference between the wise and the foolish is oil. They all got a lamp. They all got on the right garments. They're all there for the same purpose. The only difference, the only difference 
is oil. Those that had the oil, they got to go. Those that didn't have the oil got left and couldn't get in when it was too late. Now, according to other scriptures, oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou hast anointed our head with the oil of gladness. You know what Romans chapter 8 says about the Holy Spirit? It says, he that hath not the Spirit of Christ is none of his. You see, the Holy Spirit convicted you, John. The Holy Spirit wooed you. The Holy Spirit pointed you to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit regenerated you put the life of eternal life of God and then spirit baptized you into the body and then on top of that, I like this, sealed you, whoo, until the day of redemption. Therefore his spirit bears witness with my spirit that I belong to Jesus. Man, Miss Arthur had a little argument one day one day, just one day, one day, I got a feeling I need to move on again. And I looked at her and I said, you're not saved. Now, fellas, don't say that. That's not good. That's not going to solve anything. But you know how dumb men are. We just say it, hoping it'll work this time. You're not saved. She said, oh, yes, I am. I said, when did you get saved? She said, when I was nine years old, I said, oh. I said, how do you know you're saved? She said, the Holy Ghost told me. I went, you saved. There is something in you called the Holy Spirit. And for you young converts that's never studied in depth Bible doctrine, you know this much about it. Woo! You got something you didn't have before. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there. Hey, I like it when my wife says, honey, I love you. Things are going to be all right. I love it when my kids say, daddy, I love you. Everything's going to be all right. My mama called right on time this morning at 930. Honey, I love you. Everything's going to be all right. My daddy who's in glory used to put that big arm around me and say, boy, cheer up, son, don't worry, trust God, everything's gonna, I love that, but how many agrees with thee this morning? There's nothing like in the wee hours of the darkness when the Holy Spirit of God crawls in your heart and says, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Thank God for the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. It leads me to this, a time that is blessed, a truth that is beautiful, but here's a tragedy that is bad. Those who did not have the oil were shut out. You say, what does that mean, preacher? Let me say it like this. I've often been asked, Brother Joe, can you tell me who's going to heaven and who's not? I can. You ready? Them that saved is going. Them that ain't saved ain't. Let me say it like this. Them that are saved, the Holy Spirit in them, they're going. Them that have never been saved and there's no Holy Spirit, he don't dwell in unsafe people. You're going to be left behind. And you'll go to the world, but you won't be able to get it. 
You'll try to buy it, but you won't be able to get it. Because if you're not prepared and ready when Jesus comes, the door is going to be shut. How many believe this morning Jesus means what he said? Remember, he said, I'll open a door and no man can shut it. I believe that. I believe that. But I also believe he teaches when he shuts a door, no man can open that door. Several years ago, I was preaching through Revelation, and I got to chapter 4, and I dealt with the rapture of the church, and I used this illustration, and so those of you that's heard it, just act like you've never heard it before and enjoy the fire out of it. I remember back in school, we was in science class one day and we were studying the laws of magnetic field. And that was a little illustration. I won't ever forget it. The teacher put some straight pins here and some toothpicks here. And the teacher took a big magnet and when she held that magnet over top of the straight pins, you know what happened. They got caught up to meet the magnet. She held that same magnet over top of the toothpicks and it was like a Baptist church on Sunday morning. They didn't even wiggle. Didn't even wiggle. And the teacher went on to explain the laws, the principle of magnetic field in scientific terms. Well, that's been a long time. And I really am not up on scientific terms like our scientist back here who's coming up with a cure for COVID. Hello, John. Praise God. But here's the laws of magnetic field in Georgia slash Virginia slash Pike County language. You ready? Hold on. There was something another in them pins that gets hooked up with something another in that magnet. And whatever's in them pins ain't in them toothpicks. I think I deserve a hand for that right there. I, 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 that's deep right there. You say, bring it home, preacher. Oh, when that trumpet sounds and the bridegroom cometh, something in him is gonna hook up with something in me. And that something is a somebody. That somebody is a someone. And that someone is the indwelling witness of the Spirit of God. And this robe of flesh will drop and rise and seize the other lasting prize and shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, good by sin, good by death, good by separation, good by destruction, good by heartache, and hello, sweet Jesus, for the Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, the Lord omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah. Are you ready today? Are you trimming your lamps? Polishing your globe? Listening? watching and looking for some golden daybreak. Oh boy. I know we gotta go and I got a raspy voice but I'm wanting to sing. And I know I can't sing but Larry Brown never could either. It, it never stopped him. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll it's called a yonder when the roll is called up yonder. Hey, hey, hey. 
when the road is called up yonder I'll be not there not here but by God's amazing grace and the blood of Calvary I will be there hallelujah what a savior the midnight cry are you ready if not get ready because this could be the dawning of that grand and glorious day. We're standing all over the building this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you for the Word of God. It's alive, it's powerful, eternal. And thank you, Lord, for the truth of it. Lord, may we use this time to prepare, to get ready for that grand and noble day when the King of Kings will split the eastern sky. We love you today. Lord, if there's one in in-person worship today that's never trusted Christ as Savior, may this be the grand and glorious day. Lord, we pray for the hundreds and thousands of people that today and throughout this week will find this internet broadcast. Oh, may the Holy Spirit visit where they are. Bring them unto yourself. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your word. Lord, I'm glad you've not forgotten us nor left us stranded on the shores of time. Lord, he that will come, will come and will not tarry. And we give you praise. We give you glory. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Our heads are bowed this morning all over the building. And Brother Jerry, just sing a verse or two of that in a moment. And I, I'm about as tired as this social distancing as you are. I'm afraid that's keeping a lot of people from coming to God and a lot of Christians from getting what they need from God. But this altar is pretty wide today. I don't know how far it is from that side to that side. It's a long way, I know that. And if you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ and you don't want to be left behind or left out, you meet me down here today. We'll take the Word of God and show you how to be saved. If you're here this morning, you got loved ones that are lost, you got needs in your life, and you want to be found close to Jesus when he comes. Find your place, find your place. Let's call on God today because this could be the dawning of that day. Brother Jerry, sing it. Altars open. If you need help, come to the Lord. If you need help, Find a place to pray. Let God minister to your heart. Let him help you. Wonderful Savior. A wonderful Savior is Jesus Christ. Some of you men just pray for Brother Mike. His heart is broken. Heart is broken. Oh, in the road is called to be under. When the road is Brother Jerry, it in their verse that goes up on that bright and cloudless. Sing that for on me. that bright and cloudless morning. When the dead in Christ shall rise And the glory of his resurrection share When his chosen ones shall gather Hallelujah. To the home beyond the skies 